People have been begging me to remake the world famous chocolate chip cookies from LeVan Bakery. Bro, I would need to go all the way to New York to try them before I did that. Logically, obviously, I'm like, yeah, let's go. We do kind of be doing that though, so. Is it bad if I've never had one before? Well, we're going now, so it's, all right. it's never too late, okay? It's never too it's late. Fine. It's fine. 11 years ago now that I had my first Love M cookie. This is a, a New York staple at this point. I don't know what kind of cookie you're into, but this is a um, basically a ball of warm cookie dough with a vaguely crispy exterior. Thick bastard. This is a thinking man's cookie. Yes, I like yeah. that. <laughs> I like that. This car doesn't go zero to 60 that fast, but it'll move. Oh shit. <laughs> the people will literally ride either the line or a quarter into your lane and then everybody's kind of they're like that's fine. And I'm like this isn't This is not fine. Oil change and expect. Shut expect up, shut up. up. Okay. We're here in the beautiful Upper West Side at the original Laven Cookie Bakery, uh, Laven Bakery. <laughs> I keep calling it Cookie Bakery. One of each cookie, please. One of each cookie. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Pay dirt. <clears throat> All right, let's dig into one of these mugs. Wow. Uh, look at the bottom, it looks great. There's caramelization on there. Oh. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> you almost took my thumb off. <laughs> Can I break this? Break this wow, one? yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> Against the odds. <laughs> I'm actually glad, I'm actually glad that happened. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. That, one was, that one was a little sad. Oh, well. oh shit. Wow. It's not exactly how I described it to you. No, no, it's just like, it's just a lot better than I thought. Blowing my mind how good this is. Also having this like thicker texture is like you maintain sort of gooey, liquidy chocolate. That won't happen with a normal cookie. They probably go pretty light on the baking soda, baking powder, richness, maybe more egg yolks, maybe? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I, don't, I really don't know. So it's guarded. kind of a well-guarded secret. So you're gonna try to recreate this at home? I think I can do it. So everybody in the world can experience this. It's your turn, too. <laughs> well, that was fun. Now we're back in town, and I think we're ready to take on this challenge. Before we even get started, I just wanna say a quick thank you to Binging with Babish. Andrew, thank you, we appreciate you, we love you, and we kiss you. And one more thing, I have a collab video that went up on Babish's channel. There will be a link in the description. Be sure to go click that and watch it. It's bread, you know, you like that. All right, so not to flex, but I actually got this right on the first try, so I'm flexing. Couple important notes here. The chocolate that you're using, you want it to be relatively dark, like 60 to 70% cacao, so make sure that that's on the board. No milk chocolate. The second thing that you want is you want to use cake flour. No all-purpose flour. I don't want to hear substitutions. Please use cake flour. You know how I feel about that cake. So you're going to start off with one and a quarter cup or 280 grams of unsalted butter. Bring it to a melt. Wait, wait, no. You, you know what I mean. Set that to the side and let it cool a little bit. Then rough chop one pound or 450 grams of dark chocolate, like a lot. You want it to look like this, sort of some randomized pieces, some big, some small, some tiny, you know, yeah. In a medium-sized bowl, combine one and a half cups or 230 grams of cake flour and two cups or 275 grams of all-purpose flour. One and a half teaspoons or five grams of kosher salt and two teaspoons or eight grams of cornstarch and half a teaspoon or six grams of baking soda. Get that some whiskey whiskey to stand mixer fitted with the whisk attachment. And yes, you can do this by hand in a regular bowl with a whisk, don't worry. Add one and a quarter cup or 285 grams of brown sugar, light brown sugar, and half a cup or 100 15 grams of white granulated sugar. Begin whisking that on medium speed and then slowly stream in your butter. Whisk that all together until it looks nice and creamy like this. Then to that, one egg at a time, you're gonna add two eggs followed by three egg yolks, making sure to incorporate them in between each egg, of course. Now, once you've got a nice, smooth, homogenous little thing going on here, switch to the petal attachment and then mix in your flour mixture. Don't forget to spill a bunch of flour all over the place when you're pouring it into your mixer because for some reason, mixtures are built this way in such a way that you always spill flour I don't know, I'm blaming the mixer instead of myself. That's just how it goes. Once your dough is nice and smooth, go ahead and fold in two cups or 165 grams of rough chopped walnuts. I'd recommend toasting your walnuts, by the way, and your chopped chocolate. And also, uh, maybe don't do this in the machine because it's a little bit rough on your machine. So, and there you go, there's your nice little cookie dough. Now, number one tip with these, if you want them to be tall, you need to chill these. So wrap them up and put them in your refrigerator for at least 45 minutes. The longer you chill them, the taller they'll be. I mean, you can only get them so cold, but you see what I'm saying. So fast forward and you've got your chili boy, right? Now we need to talk about scooping. Scooping is very, very important here. Upon further research,
research, I found on their website that their cookies typically average around six ounces in size. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a six ounce cookie ball. And you want these balls to be tall. I know this sounds weird, but I found that a Vorath four ounce stainless steel disher works really well if you stuff it in there really nicely. I'll have a link in the description for that if you wanna use that, if you don't have a scale, whatever, do what you wanna do. But get nice balls, okay? Then just arrange them onto baking sheets lined with parchment paper. I had six here. I'd recommend doing four on each tray just to have extra room. If you want these to be extra tall, I would recommend refrigerating them for 25 more minutes. I did not, and you will see the minor consequences in a bit. Next, you're gonna place them into an oven set to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 Celsius. Yes, very hot. For 10 to 13 minutes or until lightly browned on the outside. You want the inside to be a little bit underdone. That's the goal here. And so here they are. Here's a little side by side just for comparison. I think we did pretty good here, guys. You know, considering we got this on the first try and they're pretty darn close. I would say they're about 85 to 90% of the way there in terms of similarity. But do you want to know what it is 100% of the way there? B roll. <laughs> guys and that is it so i feel pretty good about this i don't think that they were perfect i think they could have been a little bit taller and i think if you wanted them taller you just need to chill the dough much longer i only chilled mine for about 30 or 45 minutes again thank you so much to andrew uh wait k benching with babish everybody calls him babish yeah bradley only calls him babby hey bradley only if you're watching kiss kiss love you uh hit me up that was a ton of fun babish and, blah, blah. babish and i have been talking for a while I, I i've hinted at it a bunch everybody kind of already figured it out pretty early on so thanks for that i'm also doing a collaboration on his channel there will be a bread video over there like I said earlier be sure to go check that out there will be a link in the description but with all that said if you enjoyed this video or you learned something leave a like subscribe and I will see you next time also don't forget to subscribe to Babish too he's in the freaking description bro go go get that go click that click that button please